So let's look at how we write a chemical reaction in the form of a chemical equation. Uh, for example, if we take a copper penny and put it into a test tube containing nitric acid, the following things occur. We get some bubbling, we see a brown gas, there's a blue-green solution, heat is released, and the penny is corroding. So it's pretty obvious that a chemical reaction is taking place. What we want to have a look at is how do we write that down? How do we, how do we collect that information? Uh, so we're going to look at writing word equations. Well, here's another good example. If we put a piece of magnesium metal into a test tube of hydrochloric acid, we get uh, bubbles, we get uh, magnesium metal corroding, magnesium chloride is made in the solution, and a lot of heat is released. So if we were to describe that in a sentence, okay, so this is rather like if we were writing English, we would say solid magnesium metal reacts with aqueous hydrochloric acid to produce aqueous magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. Now, that's a lot of words. Well, of course, in science, we're rather, uh, you know, we don't like to write a lot of words. So we use a word equation, which is much more simplified. We would say magnesium plus or combined with hydrochloric acid creates or produces magnesium chloride plus hydrogen gas. Now, that saves a lot of words and is a bit quicker. Here's another example of a chemical reaction taking place. A piece of copper metal put into a test tube that contains silver nitrate. The copper metal corrodes, releasing copper two ions into the solution. Silver ions precipitate from the solution and are deposited as solid. You'll actually collect uh, solid silver inside this test tube. Here it is written as a word equation. Copper plus or combined with silver nitrate produces or makes copper two nitrate and silver. So there we have it written as a, a word equation. Now, that's really not quite enough information because uh, what about the conservation of uh, matter as talked to us by uh, uh, Antoine Lavoisier? A word equation, for, for example, for the creation of water from hydrogen plus oxygen makes water, doesn't really give us an idea of the count of the atoms that are involved in it. And so we're going to resort instead to a skeleton equation. Now we can actually look at the chemical compounds here. H2 as a gas is going to combine with O2 as a gas and make H2O. So now we can actually see what atoms are being involved in here. The words don't kind of help us with that one, but the using the formulas does. Now, the, the matching up here becomes really important. If we look, for example, at oxygen, here it is. Oxygen is O2. It's made of two oxygen atoms joined together. And we look at water. We see that what's going on here is that water consists of one oxygen atom, but there are two, two hydrogens. For every single oxygen, there's two hydrogens. So if we just have one molecule of H2, that's not enough. Uh, if we're going to make, if we're going to work with these two oxygen atoms in that molecule, we're going to need another set of hydrogen to make this work. We actually need two hydrogen molecules for every single oxygen molecule, and we create two molecules of water. So down here, we have the balanced chemical equation, and we write it as two H2 gases plus O2 gas makes two H2Os. Now, we could put a 1 in front of that uh, O2, but it's really not necessary because, after all, I wouldn't have written uh, the word O2 if there wasn't already uh, one of them there. So one is a complete waste of time. Uh, we don't even bother writing it. Now these whole numbers that we put in front are referred to as coefficients. And that's really all we can do to balance an equation. Many kids are tempted to do something like this. They'll try to change subscript in the formula. Now you can't do that. The, the formula for water is H2O. Now no matter what you'd like to do to change those numbers, it's still got to be H2O, so you can't mess with that. All you can play with are, are the coefficients. So let's look at a little demonstration of how this works. Oxygen combines with methane to make carbon dioxide and water. Now if we write it as a skeleton equation, we have O2 combines with CH4 to make CO2 and H2O. Let's do a little bit of counting here of the oxygen, the carbons, and the hydrogens that are in these equations. If I look at the oxygen and look at the reactants, or the left-hand side, I can see I've got two oxygens, O2. If I look over on the product side, I can see I've got oxygen in a couple of places. In CO2, I've got two oxygens, and in H2O, I've got one. So I've got a total of three oxygens on the product side. And right off the bat, I can see that the counts don't match. What about the carbon? 
Well, there's one carbon in CH4, and there's one carbon in CO2. So those match one to one. How about the hydrogen? Well, there's four hydrogens in uh, CH4, uh, but there's only two hydrogens in, in water. So I can see right now that um, we don't have a match here. It's, it's not a balanced equation at all. How can I even things up a little bit? All I can do is put a whole number in front of the molecules. Well, let's start, for example, uh, with something like, say, the hydrogens down there on the bottom. What if I took and said two molecules of water, two H2Os? What would that do? Well, that would give me two H2s here which is 4, right, because 2 times 2, the big number, multiplied by the subscript, that gives me 4 H's. And that balances with the, the 4 H's that I had on the uh, reactant side. Okay, uh, the, the carbons are still cool, 1 and 1. What about the oxygen? Well, I've got 2 on one side and 3 on the other. But since I added that 2 in front of water, that changes things a little bit here. Because now I've got uh, 2 oxygens in CO2, and now I've got two oxygens in that H2O, pardon me, so that's a total of four. Two in the CO2 and two in the water, I've got four. So what if I was to simply go over to the oxygen over here and double up on that, and instead of having just two, I'd have two times two, which is four. So with a little bit of uh, messing around with these coefficients, I can get a balanced chemical equation. It turns out that the balanced equation for the combustion of methane is two molecules of oxygen, one molecule of methane makes one molecule of CO2 and two molecules of water. And now the oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen match up on both sides of the equation and it's balanced. The only way to get good at this is by doing lots of practice. So here's some equations to practice. And I'm just going to talk my way through it. You can stop and replay anytime you want to. I've got uh, iron nitrate combines with uh, sodium phosphate to make sodium nitrate and iron phosphate. Lots of numbers all over the place here. But let's start with the iron. Over here I've got one iron. Here I've got Fe3. So what if just for starts I just put a 3 in front of this molecule and I get 3 FeNO3s. Now not only will I get 3 iron, so that takes care of my iron problem, but I end up getting 3 times 2. See this 2 here? I get 3 times 2 nitrates. Well that's a total of, uh, that's a total of 6 nitrates. All right, well, if I go over to the product side and put a 6 in front of this molecule, that'll get me 6 nitrates, uh, but it also gets me 6 sodiums. All right, so if I go back here and look at the sodium, I see I've got Na3. Well, I can get a 6 by multiplying that by 2, because 2 times 3 will give me 6 sodiums. However, that also gets me uh, 2 phosphates. Yeah, but look at this. There you go, 2 phosphates. This equation is now balanced. 3 FeNO3. Uh, combines with two uh, sodium phosphates to make six sodium nitrates and just one iron phosphate. Number two here, I've got nitrogen gas combines with hydrogen gas to make ammonia gas, and I've got problems here. If I look at my hydrogen on the ammonia, I've got NH, I've got three, okay, but over here I've got H2. Now hang on a second, twos and threes can be played with each other to make six. If I put a two in front of this molecule and a three in front of this one, what happens to my hydrogen? Well, two times, 2 times 3 is 6 hydrogens, and 3 times 2 is 6 hydrogens. My hydrogen counts equal each other. But in putting that 2 here in front of the ammonia, I've got 2 nitrogens. But that's okay, because uh, nitrogen is a diatomic molecule, so it all works out in the end. Calcium chloride reacts with water to make calcium hydroxide and HCl. All right, well, the calciums are looking good. They, they balance. Uh, one calcium on the left, one on the right. But these chlorines are a bit of a problem. I've got two chlorines here and only one chlorine here. So what if I throw a two in front of this molecule, and that, that'll get me two chlorines. Now, mind you, that also gets me uh, two hydrogens. And for that matter, I've got hydrogens over here. So already in the calcium hydroxide molecule, this one, I can see I've got two oxygens and two hydrogens. Well, these two hydrogens here plus these two hydrogens here make a total of four hydrogens. My water molecule here has two hydrogens, so if I double that, I get four. Two times two gives me four H's over there, which matches the number of hydrogens I have over on the right-hand side. Now, it also causes my oxygen here to double as well, because I'm multiplying the whole molecule. But fortunately, in the hydroxide over here, there is a 2 right there at the end, so I've got two oxygens there. This is now balanced. 
one calcium chloride combines with two molecules of water to make one molecule of calcium hydroxide and two molecules of hydrochloric acid. Next equation. Silicon chloride reacts with water to make silicon dioxide and hydrochloric acid. Uh, the silicons are looking good, but the chlorines are missed. Here I've got four. Over here I've only got one. So I'll throw a four in front of this molecule, and that'll give me four HCLs. Now, in, in so doing, I get my four chlorines all right, but I also get four hydrogens. Back over here, my hydrogens are being counted by twos. So if I throw a two in front of the H2O, I'll get two H2s, which is four Hs. That's good, so that takes care of my hydrogens. But, of course, I'm also going to get two oxygens out of the deal. And that's just fine, because in silicon dioxide, we have two oxygens. Last one, uh, H3PO4 reacts with calcium sulfate to make uh, calcium phosphate and H2SO4 acid. So what do we got going on here? Well, I'm going to take these polyatomic ions. See this PO4? Uh, that's a polyatomic ion. It goes as a group. And here's a PO4 over here, and there's two of them. So what if I did this? If I throw a 2 in front of that whole molecule, that'll give me two of those PO4s. Uh, mind you, it's also going to get me uh, a bunch of extra hydrogens. Um, I'm going to get uh, I'm going to get uh, two times H3 is going to give me six hydrogens. And over here, I've only got two hydrogens. So if I put a three in front of here, I'll get three times two. I'll get six hydrogens again. So over on the uh, left hand side, I got two times three is six hydrogens. Over here, I got three times two is six hydrogens. Now. That's also going to get me uh, three sulfates, because not only am I multiplying the H's, I'm also multiplying the sulfates as well. I get three of those. So back to this molecule, the calcium sulfate, I better put a three in front of that one so I can get my three sulfates. But that also gets me three calciums. Not a problem, because if you look over here, the formula for calcium phosphate does contain three calciums. So once again, we achieve balance. They're always going to balance. If this is a proper chemical reaction that really takes place in reality, it will balance. Your struggle, of course, is to find the coefficients that go in front and make it work. We can give you a few hints to live by. So big hint number one, you cannot change the subscripts because that ruins the formula for the compound. You can only adjust the coefficients. That's all you can play with. If you have a polyatomic ion on both sides of the equation, treat them as a unit and do them first. So notice here I've got a phosphate, I've got a phosphate and I've got a sulfate. Um, do those guys first and balance them. That's the first thing you should do. Uh, do the metals next, then do the nonmetals. Leave any elemental compounds like H2, O2, etc. Leave these guys by themselves because they're loners. If you leave them to the end, you can put any number you want to in front of them. So leave the loners alone. Reduce the ratios to the lowest terms possible. So for example, you can see here I've got four O2s, two uh, CH4s, two CO2s, and two H2Os. Okay, well, well that's silly because twos and fours can be reduced, right? I can I, I can uh, take that 4, and I can divide it by a 2, and I can get a 2 out of the deal, and I can get 1, and I can get 1, and I can get 1, which I'd never write. I would just erase those, right? So really what I've got is two O2s, one CH4, one CO2, and one H2O. Of course, the total count of the reactant atoms that are on the left-hand side of the equation must equal the total count of the product atoms that are on the right-hand side of the equation because that's the law of conservation of mass.